Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna talk you through buying my Hasselblad 503CW, what I was looking for, and this is half about the camera, half about a travel vlog. So folks, I'm actually filming this just a couple of days before I go in for my operation. If you haven't heard about that, links in the caption below, but I wanted to have some content to go live. So apologies if you leave any comments, they won't get replied to for several weeks. So last time I was in Japan, I went to pick up a Hasselblad 500 series camera. I'd had my heart set on one for ages and it was finally time to grab one. After doing some research, I decided the 503CW was for me. It's the newest one, it has the least faults, it's got the best resale value. Um, and they actually made them new up until just a few years ago. Um, beautiful, all mechanical, no battery in it whatsoever. Also, no light meter. Everything on it is manual, manual focus, no aperture priority mode, anything like that. So you need to either carry a meter or get really good at using your eye. Now, whilst I was in town, I was able to meet up with my buddy Bellamy Hunt. He's the Japan camera hunter, if you've never heard of him. He's got maybe, I don't know, maybe the second best job in the world. He, his job is finding rare and exotic and just sought after cameras and buying them on behalf of people for commission. And he's got other aspects to his business as well, but that's a big part of it. So if you're looking for a great camera, um, get in touch with him. He, you know, a lot of the best stuff in the world is in Tokyo and knowing the right places to go is really important. I made a buying guide for camera shops in Ginza if you're going yourself. Again, all the videos I mentioned, I'll put a link in the caption below. But so let's pick this up. I, I got advice from him on what to look for and shops to check out, but I actually bought this on a day that we weren't able to meet up. And the following day I met him for coffee, Bellamy that is, to take a look at it and give me his thoughts on the condition of it and the, the value that I paid for it. So let's pick it up there. So I've got a camera on me too. Okay, so let's uh, have a look. This is the one I ended up getting. Let's see if I've um, got myself a terrible deal or well, no, if your I mean, you advice got it is... From, you got it from Katsumido and I love this about Japan. When you buy it from a shop, each one of them has got their nice little, little wrapping cloth with their name on it. They were... Nice touch. Uh, yeah, I don't really get that, like how the decoration for, like if you buy a box of cookies, the yeah. box will be worth as much as the Presentation's cookies. Presentation's important for them, you know, no. I mean, it, it, it's culturally important. They also so. threw in a nice roll of film as a thank you. Oh, and bonus. Yeah. Okay. Looks clean. Um, there's no peeling leather anywhere. There's hardly any marks on the base plate. It looks like it's never been mounted. <laughs> You know, often when you buy these, this will be scratched to hell. Yeah. And um, this is in really, really nice condition. So, from what I can tell, the back is one of the newest ones. Um, yes. It's, which is the plate holder that yeah. some people don't really like. Some but... people like it. Um, I like it, and that's purely because I'm massively cack-handed and probably either bend this or lose it. Funny you say that, I tend to break things too. So it's better for me to uh, to have one of those kicking around. This is in really clean condition. The whole thing. Uh, I think you've got a pretty good deal uh, from Katsumido. And it's, Katsumido is funny because it's considered the Harrods yeah. of camera stores in Japan. You know? Uh, you know, when you see one, because we only saw that one and the other one at Lemon, which was yeah. 90,000 more, but with the lens yeah. um, and no warranty, I kept thinking, what's what's wrong with it? Like, because they had CXs for almost the same price. Yeah. No, this one's lovely. Functions well. It's nice and smooth. It's got, it's got dust in it, but you can clean that out. So, uh, for people at home, remind wh why the 503 is so popular. So the reason I got it is, uh, I understand it's one of the newest ones, it's likely to have mechanical problems and potentially better resale. Yeah, well, this is it. This is exactly why um, everybody else gets it and why you got it too. It's There's plenty of parts available for it still. Even new parts are available for it in some places, although, you know, Hasselblad, uh, I'm not entirely sure they'll send me parts, but, um, you know, they're easy to service, they're easy to maintain, uh, Hasselblad still do them, um, as far as I'm aware, 
Because uh, they only officially stopped making them last year or year before. Two years ago, I think. Um, yeah, so you know, this this is a ca- it's a very recent film camera, so they're not going to be heavily used. Mm. You know, you get a, a 503 or 500 or something like that, 501. Chances are, it's been, some of them have definitely been put through the ringer. You know, they were uh, used by pros, and pros aren't necessarily gentle with their equipment. You know, true. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, for the price you paid, and you got it tax free as well, right? Helps. Yeah, bonus. Um, yeah, fantastic. Camera. Ding ding ding. Yeah, I think you're going to have uh, a really good time with this when you put those those gorgeous lenses you get on it. Mm, haven't told them about that yet. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a good outcome there. Now, we were in Shinjuku meeting up for the coffee, so we went to Map Camera to look for some extra backs. I wanted to get at least a second back for this one. The point of this style of camera is you pop in the, what do they call this, the dark plate? It's basically just a separator. That covers your film off, so then you can take the back off and switch back so you can have different kinds of film running at the same time. So I wanted to get more than one different back, and the same is true, you can switch that off and put a digital back on. I tested the Hasselblad back on this whilst I was in Japan again. Link for that one's in the caption below. So let's pick it up at Map Camera looking for backs, and then we also go film shopping. Three, 12, one, two, three. They've got another three online, but they're only available online. But they've got three here. Mm-hmm. Um, it's at the high end of what I was looking at before. Yeah, I mean, that one that, at the top. I think top, that's the newest one, or one of the newer ones. Yeah. Um, I mean, the average I pay is about 25, 26,000. Uh-huh. And that's when I get my, my prices for a nice one. Okay. I mean, the one up the top there, you can look at the description of the. On the top left there's a little kanji in, and this says Ryohin, which means like beautiful quality. Okay. And the 17,000 yen one says Namihin, which means user grade. Okay. So, I mean, they all work and they all come with a two week return. There's no warranty on them, but they all come with a two week return. Okay. Um, yeah, well, the at Lemon in Ginza was 17 was. Okay, 13 was, he couldn't explain it, but it may not work. And yeah. then it was 20 to 30. And with Lemon, you've got to bear in mind, it's a consignment-only shop. Yeah. They don't actually check anything. They just put the prices that the customer tells them to sell it for. It's a perfect name for the shop then. Yeah. Um... We called over the staff, which again, Bellamy was all very familiar with and friendly with, and they had no problem with us filming, and I did end up buying one here. One of the cheaper ones was in quite good quality, uh, great condition, so I picked that one up, and then that's my basic kit done for now. We headed over to another uh, shop just nearby, Yodabashi Cameras Film Shop, and picked up a bunch of different film stock, so I'm pretty much all set to go. So look, I'm really lucky. I've got four fantastic lenses on loan from Zeiss for this one, and I just can't wait to take it around. I'm going to Peru and Mongolia to lead tours this year, and can't wait to take this one along with me. But if I'm going to keep it long term and use it more and more, I'm going to need to buy more lenses and get more experience shooting with this. This is my first of this style of medium format camera that I've ever owned. Let me know what you'd like to see. I'm thinking to make a small series of videos on this guy. Higher production value than this one. Again, I'm sorry, as I said, I'm just kind of trying to get a few things teed up before I head off to hospital, and it's kind of a busy time. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, Thanks again to Bellamy for his help on finding this one, and I hope to see you all very, very soon. See ya.